Good morning. What does Jesus commission his church to do? Today we're at Mark 16, verses 14 to 18. Let's read. Later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So remember what we noticed last time, this unbelief when they reported the people that Jesus had appeared to reported that to the other followers. They said, oh, we don't believe that. Why are you saying this? And here Jesus rebukes the church for a hardness of heart and for unbelief. Uh, this was definitely something wrong in them. They should have believed. But Jesus has a mission for his church. They are to go everywhere throughout the world and talk about the truth of the gospel. They are to tell what Jesus is, who he is, what he has done, and what he is doing. And they are to spread that from one end of the planet to the other. It is imperative for people to be exposed to the gospel and make their own decisions about who he is and how they relate to Jesus. Certain signs will follow those who, who believe, and so we have them here, uh, healings, demons being cast out, and so on. And these things will be signs, will be kind of indicators, they're, they're useful pieces, but the biggest miracle of all is always a transformed heart, and that's the most persuasive thing. But still, these things have a utility, and God used these, he has these gifts for his church. It is converted uh, disciples who will be the most useful for the Lord in terms of bringing new hearts and souls to his church. And one thing is sure, God has a church, a living church. It is, it is scattered across the world. It is working. It is a working church. It is actively doing the gospel. It is actively proclaiming and living it. And that is for sure. And we are very glad that Jesus is alive and giving power and help to his church. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you that you have a church. We thank you that you invi have invited us to be part of it. Uh, we look around and say, well, Others we can understand, but why would you invite me? But you have a purpose. You have a, a message for each of us. You have each of our lives uh, reflects something about the way you interact with us in a very special way to this world. Help us to recognize your calling to us to be your disciples, to learn from you and to tell others about you and share the good news. So, Lord, we thank you that we could pray and ask you to empower us. Help us to be a living church active in this world and bringing message of hope across the land. Please, Lord, use me and my hearers, those who are hearing today, use us for this very purpose. And we ask for this for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. A question for you today, where you live in your congregation, what are you doing to help proclaim this, this message? How are you helping your local church? And the Lord has given you, surely, some gifts, and how are you using those gifts for Him? I'm not trying to lay anything on you, but I, I want us to be finding God's path for us, wherever we are, to serve Him. The Lord be with you today.